Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, we are in a normal week. Uh, tomorrow you do have vocab 1 through 10, Monday 11 through 20, Tuesday 21 through 30. Everyone should have picked up pieces when they entered the classroom uh, because you do have the pieces this week despite the fact that you are not here and they were not here for you yesterday. So with that being said, please make sure you are ready to go for instruction tomorrow. I hope you're not going trick-or-treating unless you have someone who's this height with you. You are too old. I wouldn't be proud of yourself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're too damn old. Okay, unless you're going with a little person, you shouldn't be going. So, anyway, um, questions, concerns, comments? This week is an interesting week. It is uh, triangular trade. We're talking about the start of slavery, which obviously has an impact to this day here in the United States, so we're going to track back its roots. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at how other civilizations have dealt with it uh, as we go through the course. Other countries have done a significantly better job addressing the problems of slavery than the United States has, and we'll address those as well uh, as we move forward. So today's map is kind of tricky. Ooh, I'm like the chosen one. Uh, so we are going to get started pretty quick because it's your last two chapter week. Do you remember that? Yeah. So if we can get going as fast as we can, that is a good thing. All right, Pacific Ocean. North America. North Atlantic. Europe. We have the Sahara Desert, Timbuktu, Janine, Angoa is here. All right, do the best you can. It does not need to be perfect. This is the Niger River. And this is Mbanza, Congo. This is your South Atlantic. We have Buenos Aires here. Buenos Aires is the capital of what modern day country? Argentina. Argentina. And we have Rio de Janeiro, which is the modern day capital of what? There we go. This is Brazil. This is, of course, South America. Over here is G U I A N A S. Perfect. And then we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. Songhe, Kingdom, sorry, Kingdom of Kenim. Borno. We have Kingdom of Congo. Slaves. Sugar. Source area. Slaves. Slave settlements. and manufactured goods. Okay. Uh, let's do Songhae first. Songhae for me is going to be this light green. So Songhae is going to be one of the largest regional kingdoms in Africa. 
They are going to control most of the African trade going through. And they are located right there. Kingdom of Kanim. They are going to be this red color. They are located over here on the Niger River. Kingdom of Congo, which is going to be down here. For me, it's going to be this blue color. Uh, just continuing the Africa side. Uh, source area of slaves. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who are the one capturing slaves? Africans, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that for the first time, we're starting to see white people are going to start buying slaves, correct? But are white people going in and capturing them in the continent of Africa? No. White people are going to pull up to the ports and say, I'll buy some slaves. And then Africans are capturing other Africans and bringing them to the ports. So white people are not on the continent in the continent yet. Does that make sense? They're just at the ports. Now, are white people going to go in and take over the whole continent? Yes. Are we there yet? No. Right now, we are, they are simply at the ports purchasing slaves. That's all they're doing right now on the continent of Africa. Will they go in and destroy Africa later? Yes. Yes, yes they will. But at the moment, they are just simply buying the slaves that other Africans are selling. Does that make white people okay? No, it's pretty shitty for them to do. However, um, it is not just white people who are doing it. So, the source area of slaves is going to be inside these regions. So, all of this territory is going to be, including inside uh, the Songhai, as well as in, in the Kingdom of Canaan, all that stuff. So, that is where most of your slaves are coming from. Okay, so if you notice, we have three things left. Slave, sugar, and manufactured goods. Slave, sugar, and manufactured goods. I'm going to draw a triangle next to all of these. I'd like you to do that as well because these are what we call part of triangular trade. Okay, it's triangular trade. Actually, I'm going to just write triangular trade just to make it as explicit as possible. Okay, triangular trade is how we're going to start moving goods. So, what is going to happen is Europe has manufactured goods. They have fabrics, they have clothing, they have all of this, uh, they have guns, gunpowder, bullets, all of these things are manufactured. Now, are they in massive factories like we think of today? No, but they're still being man-made, which means it's manufactured, manufactured, man-made. So. What is going to happen is that Europeans are going to take these items and bring them to Africa. Okay, so Europeans are going to fill ships with all these manufactured goods, textiles, guns, weapons. Rum is also another big item that they're selling. So guns and rum are all manufactured out and they're man-made, manufactured. So they're bringing them to Africa and they are selling textiles, uh, guns, and rum in exchange for what? slaves. So, they are using manufactured goods to purchase slaves. These slaves are then going to be brought from Africa to the New World. Why do they need slaves in the New World, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Reagan. To work the plantations. Why can't they just use all of the indigenous population, Reagan? They're dying at incredibly fast rates. So they do not have reliable workforces. And do you think a bunch of white people from Europe know how to work in the conditions of like the Caribbean to grow sugar? No, absolutely not. They're not tough enough to do it. So they import slaves in order to do the work. Do you think white people from Europe are used to mining? No. So what they do is they import people. So Manufactured goods are going to leave Europe. Those manufactured goods are going to be sold to Africans in exchange for slaves. Then those slaves are going to be brought to the New World and spread throughout the New World. 
to purchase the slaves, Americans are going to sell raw materials like tobacco, cotton, sugar is going to be one of the largest ones. Most of your sugar is converted into molasses because you can carry more molasses than you can sugar. Okay, so most of your sugar is going to be converted into molasses and this is going to be used to make the most popular beverage in the world. And what is the most popular beverage in the world? Rum. Uh, you can impress your parents with this fun fact. If they drink brown rum, it's an old world rum. They're using molasses, which is your traditional form of rum. If they drink white rum, that is a post-1900 style when they have... Uh, they now use pure cane sugar instead of molasses, so you can impress your parents with your alcohol knowledge. And they'll be like, why do you know this? And be like, AP World, man, you learn things. AP Psych this week learned about the difference between bourbon and whiskey and what makes sparkling wine different from champagne. So, you know, spread the knowledge, friends. Huh? Please don't say it like that. Cool. Thank you, Jerry. All right, so your slave settlements, ladies and gentlemen, these are where the slaves are going. Okay. Brazil is going to be the largest importer of slaves in the world. Is it because they just need lots of them or they kill most of them? They kill them. They kill them. They work them so hard. If you are a slave and you are brought to Brazil, you have about two months to live. And then you die. And then they replace you. And then two months later, those people die. Uh, Brazil is the worst place to get placed. You're going to die. It's the smallest window. So, all the slave, most of the slaves are bought in Brazil, obviously. They're making the most money off of the sugar cane. Then they go northward. From the north, then they go into the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, you are going to extend your life. Uh, if you make it to there, you're going to extend your life. Uh, significantly in comparison to Brazil and then they're going to have some in what we would call now the United States of course now keep in mind if you look at my map is the South the only ones importing slaves no, no. it is the whole eastern seaboard in, in, in New England used to have slaves they just got rid of them faster why did uh, the North get rid of slaves faster why because they were morally guided why Maggie yeah, their economy is going to change here pretty quickly into industrialized processing. They're, and during the Industrial Revolution, they're going to improve. By the way, I'm done. So color the rest of your map really quickly. So the North is going to industrialize while the South is not. So they don't need slaves. They have poor people. <laughs> they have poor people up in the North. So they would rather pay poor women even less than purchasing a slave. Purchasing a slave is very expensive. Okay? So, up in the north, it's not because they were morally guided they gave up slavery. It was just easier to pay women significantly less. And you don't have to buy them. You can just pay them a terrible daily wage and they keep coming back. So they were like, hell yeah, we don't need slavery anymore. We just have poor women. We can pay like half a penny a day. This is great. So, the North isn't more morally guided. They just had a different economy. Because, apparently, one of the most racist places in the world, in the United States, is Boston, Massachusetts. There was a huge article that came out from ESPN uh, talking about baseball players. African-American baseball players hate playing in Boston because of all the racial slurs get thrown at them. I would like it known. I am from Boston. And this is incredibly embarrassing, of course, that my, my hometown uh, is known as the worst and most racist place in baseball. But it's important that we address these facts and hopefully change, because if we ignore it, does that mean it's better? No. So, um, the impacts of slavery obviously are still felt to this day. Uh, they're all over. And... As a white woman, I can't really attest to it, but uh, it is important that we still have <coughs> Now, Maggie, does your pumpkin spice latte feel even more festive today? Yeah. Nice. 
Did you get an extra thing of pumpkin? No. No, you're it just going. Extra good it was though. <laughs> nice. Think of all the pumpkins you've murdered in your pumpkin spice lattes. Did you get a pumpkin? I do have a pumpkin. His name's Penelope. I forgot that one. I just remembered. It's her name. Yeah. No, her name's Penelope. Penelope is a. Uh... It's a girl's name. Yeah. We're I, we're we're gender neutral in this class. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, if, I, I don't personally care. If you want to be gender neutral, be gender neutral. I wish I was cool enough to pull off gender neutral. <laughs> like, you know, like, who's the chick who was in, like, I don't know, she's absolutely stunning. I like how you came up. Uh, she is also very pretty. Yeah, I like, yeah, I wish I could pull it off, but I can't. I don't even think I pull off girl well. But I definitely couldn't pull off man. So here I am, stuck. It's okay. I'm all right with it. Are you ready? Yeah. Lily's <coughs> over you, people. Lily, what are you doing tonight? Are you doing anything? It's a Thursday. It's also okay if you don't. It's a dumb holiday. It is a dumb holiday. What do you think? Because they're trying to pass a law, not like a bylaw, it's not law, but a bylaw saying that Halloween will be celebrated on the last Saturday of the year. Is your birthday today? Yes. Happy birthday. That's super super Christmas, yeah. Like it's such a happy it's holiday. Like a it's like a story. The last of like October, the last Saturday of October. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. No, that's that's Thanksgiving, though. That's like that's right next to Thanksgiving. Why wouldn't it just be the last Saturday in October? That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Wait, you. Wait, it's it the last Saturday of October. Is that they want to make the official day of Halloween? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I think that makes way more sense. That's totally chill. That stupid petition that everybody sent out to like get school off on Friday. It's not like no, it's all obviously been rejected. rejected. Democracy. <laughs> Hi, your parents can keep you home any day you want. So if your parents want to keep you home because they love you so much and they want you to be in your candy coma in bed, cool. Do that. However, I will be here and I will be teaching. Like a champion. <coughs> of course. Or not. Who knows? Maybe I'll be in a candy cone too. Just kidding. No, no one comes to our house. I live in a condo. <laughs> I know. I think I, with the first year we were there, we bought like a ton of candy because if you were a kid, it's easier to go. You get way more candy if you go in a condo because the doors are like 10 feet apart. But no one came, so my husband is in Connecticut. He's actually flying home right now. So I left him a little bowl of candy at home, so when he gets home, he'll have a little bit of Halloween. But other than that, your girl's going to be in bed early, living her best life tonight. What? Why are you they collecting candy? Like, is that, like, anything to do with a holiday? No. We're Americans. We're Americans. <laughs> it's an excuse to eat junk food. What else do you need to know to be more American than that, Slav? What do you do in Romania? Not in Bulgaria? Yeah. All we actually have is uh, January. In January? They put some custard awesome. They made from like animals and they like dance around. That's pretty cool. That sounds really cool. But it is definitely cool. Yeah, no, ours is uh, stupid. So it's just about candy. So. made some business ideas. It makes a lot of money. All right, here we go. However, if you go to Walmart, because I was at Walmart last night, huge regret, by the way. Um, half the store is Halloween, half the store is Christmas. It's very confusing. It is very confusing. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going on the other side so we can get this done. Hudson Bay. Hudson Strait. Guess who discovered it? Hudson. Look at you, people. This is your Atlantic Ocean. This is Quebec. This 
is North America. These are your Rocky Mountains. Alright, over here we have Boston. Over here we have New York. We have Jamestown way down here. And then we have St. Augustine. One of my favorite places. Louisiana. Which I'll be in going to see here in like three three weeks. Is that how long we have left until Thanksgiving break? Yeah. But when's it start? I don't know. Like Not soon enough. Uh, we go every uh, every year right before Thanksgiving because we host Thanksgiving at my house. So I live in a tiny condo. It's like a thousand square feet. Your houses are probably like ten thousand square feet. Mine's a thousand. What does it say? New Spain. New Spain. Look at you. Uh, with that being said, we host fifteen people every year in my house. We got like table on table on table on table, and it's just like takes up the whole. Like, half of the house is taking up. So, because of that, we treat ourselves to New Orleans for the weekend before. And then we come home and, like, maniacs and clean and cook for the whole, like, rest of the week. Mexico City. Veracruz. Acapulco is over here. Here. Veracruz. Cuba. Over here is Hispaniola. Over here is Santo Domingo. Over here is Puerto Rico. Over here, we're going to draw a little island, and this is Jamaica. All right, we have Panama City right here. We're going to draw in a con of country line. This is G-U-I-A-N-A. -A. This is, of course, Brazil. Down here, we're going to write Rio de la Plata. Plata, sure. Over here, we're going to write New Granada. Here we have Lima, which is the modern day capital of Peru. This is, of course, the Andes Mountains. And then over here we have Conception. <coughs> and then way down here, Conception, Buenos Aires. Okay, you need five boxes. Dutch possession, English, French, Portuguese, Spanish. So, the Dutch, we'll start with them because they're the easiest. The Dutch are only going to have one place here in the New World, and it's this right over here. They're going to lose it pretty quick. Uh, don't worry, they'll be back to exploit Africa, and they exploit Africa in the absolute worst way, in the Dutch, and the uh, Congo, but we'll get to that later. All right, English. The English are going to spend most of their time in North America, of course, as you know, hence why here we are. All right, so of course they have most of the East Coast. Now they are going to follow the Appalachian Mountains. You are not supposed to, if you were a Dutch, uh, if you were an English citizen, you are not supposed to go across the Appalachian Mountains. So what did naturally all the colonists do? Yes, which really pissed them off because on the other side 
of the Appalachian Mountains were the Frenchies. So guess who the British had to keep fighting? The Frenchies, which really pissed them off, which is why the French and Indian War. Oh, sorry. Um, notice how it just kind of ends? Uh, it's because they didn't really know what was there. They just kind of assumed they owned it. Does that make sense? It kind of ends because that's really as far as they got, but they said, oh, it's ours. <laughs> they just didn't send anyone out there because it was just so big and so vast. Okay, so that is the English control. Oh, don't forget Jamaica. Jamaica belongs to um, the British, which is why they speak English in Jamaica. All right, the French. Now, the French are going to have one of the largest territories in, New in, uh, in the Americas. They are going to control all of this territory. Now, they are not going to control Florida. Who's going to control Florida? Spanish. The Spanish are going to control Florida, but the French are going to control all of this. However... They're going to lose some of it to the French and Indian War when the English win. They're also going to lose even more of it when uh, they're going to sell it to us uh, under Napoleon. Napoleon is going to buy it. No, Napoleon's going to sell it, and Thomas Jefferson is going to buy it, and that's called the. There you go. So. All of this land territory is controlled by the French. The French are using this land to uh, fur trap. That's their big thing, is they're fur trappers. All right, let's do Spanish. Spanish is going to be this ugly red color. Spanish. Okay. They are going to control all of this territory. Now, keep in mind, the Spanish are the first ones here. As we know, Christopher Columbus is the first one to land. They are going to be the first ones to really start conquering large territories. Okay. They are also the first ones to find gold. Pretty much the only ones. Because no one's going to find gold in North America until they reach California in the 1800s. And then that's going to change a lot of things. Okay. And then we have all the way down here. Which is why most of Central America and South America today speak... Spanish because of the control the Spanish had. So you should be pretty impressed by the holdings they have. I mean, the Spanish are terrible, just like the British were and the French were during this time, but I mean, it's pretty impressive how much territory they had. Now, keep in mind, they are showing up with guns, and they are showing up with diseases and wiping out the indigenous population, so it's not a fair fight, but it is a ton of territory. They do also control uh, Florida. The United States doesn't get Florida until the Spanish-American War. Then we get that. Oh, I forgot one of the French. Sorry. The French have Santo Domingo, which will later be called Haiti, and eventually will rebel from Napoleon and have a Haitian Revolution. All right. So, for the Portuguese, the Portuguese only have one country over here, and it is Brazil. Okay, the Portuguese are focusing in the old world because they were the first ones there. So they spend most of their energy on the old world except for Brazil. So by the time they realize, oh man, all the money is really in the new world, they're late to the party. However, they still get Brazil, and this is going to be very, very, very wealthy for them. They're going to do very well off of the sugar plantations that are happening here. Now keep in mind, the Portuguese are also going to be the largest purchasers of slaves because sugar production is very hard. By the way, I'm done. The sugar production is very hard to do because you have to grow sugar. Fine. Planting sugar is not hard. Harvesting sugar is hard. It's like a really thick bamboo. Have any of you ever eaten like sugar cane, like from the actual thing? Like it's not great. Like, it's, like, fibrous, and, like, you're, it's like you're chewing a stick. But it's, like, a sweeter stick. But, like, it's not sugary sweet. Uh, it's, it's fine. So, to cut it down is a huge pain. It's really hard to cut. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you have to press it. You have to pull levers and squish 
the water out of the sugar cane. That water has the sugar crystals. Then you have to let the sugar, uh, the water evaporate, and then what do you have left? Sugar. It is very time. Uh, it is very physically exhausting, which is why they're going to kill so many slaves with it. Reagan. Uh, what is Cuba? Uh, Cuba is what language do they speak? They, it's a derivative of Spanish, so yeah, it's Spain. Guys, if you look at the country and what they speak today, it'll give you a huge idea of who it is. So, in Haiti today, they speak French Creole. So, who colonized them? There you go. In Brazil, they speak Portuguese. Who colonized them? There you go. Mexico speaks Spanish. Don't say Mexican to me. The Aztecs are dead. How much time do I have? Oh, wow, we can do notes. Hey. Hey. When, doesn't that make you happy? It's your last two chapter week, people. If we get ahead, that makes our lives easier. Can we, don't we agree? Your enthusiasm is off the charts. I did give you candy today. Yeah. I did buy your favor. I mean, one, because I stole candy from you. But, I mean, Wait, every, teacher every teacher got a bag of candy, yeah. Not for every kid in all classes, but you got, like, probably, like, a hundred pieces. No one, you haven't seen any candy? No. That's hilarious. So I'm not the only, uh... No, I'm not saying last... This is a new thing they did this year. Like, months ago. Well, your girl ate hers. So, my bad. I needed it, though, you know? It was a rough time. <laughs> All right, you got one minute, then we're going to transition to notes. Now, do any of you have houses that, like, are super crazy for Halloween? Your houses? You're going to have a lot of kids? Yes. I live, like, down the street from the sky. And, like, get on their knees every year. Oh, God. Do your parents like it or hate it? But you don't like blow pops? Is there something wrong with it? I still like the gum. I like the water, uh, but I don't like it. That's why I like Tootsie Pops better. The gum is like, like Susie Gops. Like all the flavors and stuff. Sorry. I can't remember last time I had a blow pop. But they didn't have Tootsie Pops. And I know some people don't like chocolate and weirdos. So. All right. Here we go. To the notes. Let's do it. We get ahead. That means better life for us. All right, here we go. On the top of your notes, right? Week 13. I know, I'm going. Probably this morning. <laughs> you need um, F pieces. We're done with the maps. You need color pencil. Okay. All right, here we go. On the top of your notes, you need week 13. We're going to start in Africa. Here we go. All right, this Throw it away out of here. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that the Songhai Empire is going to be created by Sunni Ali. The Songhai Empire is going to be created by Sunni Ali. Sunni Ali. What religion are they? What religion is that's a sect? They're Islamic, yeah. yes. Okay, so the song, hey, they're a Muslim empire, which makes sense because in this region we have Muslim traders for centuries now, correct? Okay, Malai is the first one to convert to Islam. <laughs> Who's the guy who converts to the kingdom of Malai? 
Oh no. Oh no. No, Mansa Moose is not. It's his grandfather. Sundida. Oh no. You do know you have a midterm coming up in like four weeks, right? Cool. Yes, we spend a whole week on review. That's all we do. As a sign of respect for you, you guys work hard for me, I work hard for you, that's the relationship we have. Uh, as a sign of respect, because I know it really matters to you, it doesn't mean shit to me, uh, we stop everything for a week and we're going to review packet together. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, because I know it matters to you, so we stop everything and we review for a week together. And that's, and you'll turn in that review packet for 150 points. I impressed Emma. Did you hear? Did you hear? <laughs> wow. Some review packets like aren't really annoying. No. If we're gonna spend a week doing it, you're gonna get points for it. But I'll happily bleed you a point too if you don't do what you're supposed to do, because I'm gonna sit here and write it four times. So if I'm gonna write it four times, you are definitely writing it once. Moving forward. You need to know. They have a, a, you need to know, their entire army has muskets. Why is that surprising? Hello? What can't they make themselves in Africa at this time? They can't make gunpowder, they can't make guns, ladies and gentlemen. So, they are clearly very successful traders that have traded their ways to outfit an entire army with muskets. So ladies and gentlemen, is there any forces on Af the continent of Africa that can beat them? No. no. Their only real competition are the Europeans. Europeans at this point. The Muslims have it as well. So you need to understand that the Songhai, or their full military, is given weapon uh, guns. They're the only full military with guns. That's a big deal. Okay? So, you need to know the Swahili city-states are declining because of Portuguese, like, Portuguese trade wars. Now, who controlled all the good ports along the African coast? Africans did, and then the Portuguese came in and said, oh, it's mine now. Okay, you think they're going to give up their ports easily or with a great fight? Great fight. Great fight. And guess who's going to win? The Portuguese, because they have guns. The only people in Africa with guns at the moment are Songhai, and Songhai is up north by the Sahara Desert. Down here in the Swahili states, they can't defend themselves, so the Swahili states are going to die because the Portuguese are going to essentially exterminate them. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the collapse of the uh, Swahili city-states because of Portuguese intrusion. Skip a space, center it. Kingdom of Congo. The Kingdom of Congo is going to try to al ally themselves with the Portuguese. Okay, the Kingdom of Congo is going to try to ally themselves with the Portuguese. Why would they do that? Why? Jared? To keep themselves safe. Yeah, to keep themselves safe. If you see how they've come in and taken over all this stuff, you would try to ally with them as well. Who can make a historical comparison? Of an invading force came in and they tried to be nice. Maybe in India? Who's the invading force? We haven't gone to British invasion of India. How about the Sultanate of Delhi? Who is going to be friendly to the Sultanate of Delhi? The what? The Kingdom of V is going to, to be friendly with them. Does that make sense? And eventually they're like, ah, oh, screw you people, you are awful. Okay? Same thing's going to happen here. The Portuguese are coming in and taking over. The Kingdom of Congo is trying to be friendly with them because they see them as such a powerful force. You need to know King Nzinga Mbembe. Okay. What? Why are you laughing at his name? No, it's not a funny name. It's a good traditional African name. That's a good name. Okay, King Nzinga Mbembe. He is going to convert 
himself and his people to Roman Catholicism. Why does he adopt Roman Catholicism, Brian? To be more like the Portuguese. If you are going to make a comparison between King Nzinga Mbembe, who converts to Roman Catholicism to be closer to the Portuguese, who, uh, what other African leader could you choose who converts? Sundita, he converts to? To get closer to the? Muslim traders. There you go. So King Nzinga is going to adopt Christianity. Okay? You need to know he is doing this, A, to try to keep his people safe by saying, don't enslave <coughs> Christians. He's trying to protect his people from becoming slaves. Because if you're a real Christian, would you enslave another Christian? No. Remember, they're God's people, right? You would never enslave a Christian. So he converts his people to Christianity to protect them from being captured for slavery. Okay? He's also... Um, doing this to foster a relationship of equality with the Portuguese. Hey, you're Catholic, I'm Catholic, let's work together. How do you think this is going to go? It's going to go poorly. It's going to go poorly. Okay, so the Kingdom of Congo converts to Christianity under King Nzinga Mbembe. He's going to be known as Alfonso I. You need to know he has two names, before and after. Okay, he converts to, he changes his name to Alfonso I to be more like the Portuguese. Portuguese, to make them feel more comfortable. He's doing it, one, to save his people. Okay, by being Christians, he's like, they won't capture Christians. Guess what they would do? They would totally capture Christians, because they're not really good Christians. Okay, so, you need to know that the Kingdom of Congo is known as a massive slaving port. Okay. They are going to be selling lots and lots of slaves to the Portuguese. That's how they start their relationship. So they want their people, the people of the Congo, to be different than the other Africans. So that's why they convert to Christianity. We're Christians. They're just regular Africans. Okay, So they're trying to distinguish themselves. Okay, You need to know that... Okay. You need to know that the Kingdom of Congo realizes it's dangerous selling slaves to the Portuguese and tries to stop slave trading with them. How do you think the Portuguese feel about that? Slav, you need to write all of this down. Okay, thanks. You need to know that they're going to try to stop slave trading with the Portuguese because they realize this isn't going to work out well for them in the long run. So naturally, the Portuguese need slaves for Brazil because they kill so many people in Brazil. So how do you think the Portuguese responded to it? They didn't care, so they were like, you know what, instead of dealing with you, if I kill you, I could just take whatever I want. So the Portuguese invade the Kingdom of Congo. Okay, Kingdom of Congo gets captured by the Portuguese. You need to know that. Okay, this is the first colony in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, will it be the last? No, because all the other European nations are like, so wait. I can either pay for things or I can steal things. Which one's more cost effective? Yeah. Hell yes. So the Portuguese are the first ones to show up in Africa from Europe. They're the first ones to start colonizing in Europe as well. So the Kingdom of Congo will fall to the Portuguese. Kingdom of Ndongo. Skip a space, center it. Kingdom of Ndongo. Okay? You need to know is going to rebel and fight against the Portuguese. By the way, here's our fourth lady. And she's a boss. Okay? You need to know Queen Nzinga of Ndongo is going to fight against the Portuguese. Queen Nzinga will fight against the Portuguese with the Dutch. 
She makes an alliance with the Dutch. We'll finish that tomorrow. Have a good day, guys. Happy Halloween. Please be careful. Please be safe. Don't go. Don't go trick-or-treating. You're too damn old. You're too old. Unless you have a little person with you, you're too damn old. Have a good day. Enjoy. Do not leave your trash behind. You all agreed that you would throw your trash away. Don't be rude. See ya.